Hello and welcome to today's episode of the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. United States to probe fatal Amazon warehouse collapse. Civilians killed in US SDF operation in Syria. Colombian police found to have killed 11 in 2020 protests. And health workers in South Australia stage walkout. The United States has launched a probe into the collapse of an Amazon warehouse in Edwardsville, Illinois. Six workers trapped inside the building were killed after it buckled under a tornado on December 10th. Workers who managed to escape told Reuters that they had been told to shelter in the bathrooms. At least one person died there. According to an image shared by More Perfect Union, one of the six workers, Larry Wilden, had sent a message to his partner which read, Amazon won't let us leave. The U.S. Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, will now have six months to investigate the incident, issuing citations and proposed penalties. The Edwardsville disaster has highlighted dangerous working conditions at Amazon. According to worker complaints shared with the Intercept, many stated that they had never had a tornado or fire safety drill. Messages also showed a communication breakdown in which corporate failed to inform workers about tornado as it happened. One employee said that corporate and IT found out from the media that the building had been hit. Amazon has stated that the site received tornado warnings between 8.06 p.m. and 8.16 p.m. before it finally struck 11 minutes later. Following the Edwardsville disaster, Amazon employees have denounced management's refusal to grant time off during severe weather. Bloomberg also reported that Amazon was in the process of reintroducing a ban on cell phones inside its facilities. Some of the workers in Edwardsville facility stated that they did have their phones during the tornado despite this policy. The disaster also shed light on Amazon's hiring practices and its relation to worker safety. Only 7 out of the 190 people employed at the facility were full-time. Hiring workers on a contractual basis is known to help companies like Amazon avoid liability in cases of accidents. Civilians were reportedly shot and killed during a U.S. military operation in Syria on December 13. The Syrian Arab News Agency, or SANA, reported that the forces were conducting a large-scale airborne operation in the village of al Busera in Deir al-Zor. This was carried out with the active support of the Syrian Democratic Forces, or the SDF. The U.S.-backed forces controlled most of eastern Syria after defeating the Islamic State terror group in 2017. The operation on Monday was accompanied by intense and indiscriminate shooting on homes and agricultural land. According to Sana, three people, all of whom belonged to one family, were killed. U.S. forces reportedly also abducted a number of civilians from the area and took them to an unknown location. The U.S. Defense Department stated on Monday that U.S.-led coalition forces and the SDF had carried out an operation in al Busera. According to Reuters, four Islamic State fighters were killed during the raid, including one who was wearing a suicide vest. The Pentagon also stated that the SDF had carried out a separate unilateral operation. Meanwhile, Sputnik News has reported that four explosions were heading from a U.S. military base near Omar oil field in Deir al-Zor. U.S. has not confirmed the blast or any damages. We now take a look at Colombia where police officers are reported to have killed at least 11 people during protests against police brutality in September 2020. Andres grew after a 44-year-old taxi driver, Javier Ordonez, was killed in police custody. On September 9th, videos posted on social media showed two officers beating and repeatedly tasing Ordonez as he lay on the ground. He died from his injuries that night. Mass protests broke out in the capital of Bogota, which went on till September 11th. A 182-page report on police violence during these protests was released on December 13th. It was commissioned by the Bogota city government and supported by the United Nations. 
The report found that 75 people had been injured with firearms during the three nights of protest. Out of the 14 people killed, at least 11 were murdered by the police. These findings are based on interviews with over 90 witnesses, police officers and victims' families. The report states that Colombian police committed a massacre against civilians in poor neighborhoods. It noted that state forces had criminalized poverty, which unleashed criminal and illegal actions against people from certain social sectors. The report also states that police abandoned all principles of proportionality and that officers had not been told to refrain from using firearms by their superiors. So far, four police officers are facing murder charges for the September 2020 protests. None have been convicted or imprisoned. Moreover, the kind of police brutality witnessed in Bogota last year was recorded across Colombia during the 2021 national strike. The Inter-American Commission on Human Rights had accused officers of using excessive, disproportionate and even lethal force. And for our final story, we look at a walkout staged by health workers in South Australia. Organized by the United Workers' Union, over a hundred essential workers took part in the action on December 14th. The strike was held at Royal Adelaide Hospital and Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Adelaide. Healthcare workers in South Australia have repeatedly warned of unsafe working conditions, including understaffing. Time constraints and labour shortages have led to improper handling of medicines by unqualified staff. Healthcare workers have also pointed to other issues, including unsafe patient transfers, neglect, and potential food related hazards due to untrained personnel. Existing workers are also made to work constant double shifts while not having access to proper protective gear. At the same time, hundreds of vacancies have remained unfilled in major hospitals. The Workers' Union has also blamed the government's push to privatize healthcare for the current crisis. Despite critical staff shortages, State Premier Stephen Marshall is planning to cut 2,000 jobs in the health sector within the next two and a half years. In response to these problems, healthcare workers, including cleaning and catering staff, have been organizing statewide action. Tuesday's walkout in Adelaide followed shortly after a similar strike across three other hospitals earlier this month. And that's all for today. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.